we're going to talk about documentation. I know, it's not the sexiest part of any project, but from my experience, hardcore and solid documentation is a key indicator of future success for any measure or optimization project. So I was so excited to see some of the new features that were rolled out as part of the November 2010 release of Test and Target. They've added a lot of things in here to help you document your tests, and I'm really excited about them. I'm not going to cover all of them, but I'm going to cover a few of them that I think that anyone running tests should be utilizing. So let's take a look at them now. You'll notice that the Spotlight tab is a new tab that has been added to this version. Basically, it's a high-level overview of the performance of your campaign, giving you a snapshot of conversion rates and also key statistical measures. They've also added in some areas for you to add data and information about why you're running tests and the results of your tests. I can't tell you how many times six months down the road from, from running a test I find myself scratching my head saying, why did I run that test? Well now there's a way that we can capture that and have it all in one location. So you can see under the objective and results sections you can go in and add an objective. This test is my last test that I ran on the last tutorial about injecting search keywords to increase internal site usage. So as I set up the test I made sure to come in and add in the objective. I'm trying to get in the habit of doing that every time. You can see right below that there's an area to add results. So as I complete my analysis of this test, I can come back in here and give a quick summary about what we saw uh, after running this campaign. So nice to have the objective and the results right there side by side. Another great feature is the notes feature. As we're going through tests and it's running or doing analysis, there are a lot of things that come up. And rather than having those notes spread out across email, voicemails, different documents, it's great to just keep those summarized all in one place. So a good example here is, as we were running this injection of search key ter keyword uh, test, there was a lot of feedback about using profile search or profile parameters to capture the search terms. Uh, many people said, hey, why aren't you doing this? It's easier to implement and it's reusable. So that might be something that I would come in and add a note about. So I could come in and add a note and say, uh, let's, let's rerun this test. And we can go ahead and save that. And then anytime that we come back in and look at this, it says, okay, Jason added a note, said we should rerun this test. But this could be anything. Anything that comes up during the process, we can capture as notes and have it right in one place with everything else that's pertinent to this campaign. Another feature, if we scroll down to the bottom, is the experience snapshot features. This is awesome. Um, I got into the habit of creating snapshots of my campaigns and storing them off in some other location. But now in this version of Test and Target, it's right here within the campaign interface and tied to the campaign I ran. Awesome. So they've got a feature called automated snapshots. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. I've found if I'm running very basic uh, A-B tests, it does a pretty good job. But with our keyword injection campaign, uh, we applied targeting to the campaign that only allowed visitors that came from Google into the campaign. So as Test and Target went out to get a snapshot, it, it most likely didn't fall within the parameters of this campaign. And so if I scroll down in this area, both for the control and for the test, I'd expect to see a box here prompting visitors to use my internal search feature. And it's just not here. So what they allow you to do is simply upload your own. And I've gone ahead and done that. I went out and took a couple uh, screenshots of my test, uh, control and, and test version, and uploaded them to test and target. So now when I click on this link, it will bring up the snapshot that I took, and this shows, okay, this is my control for the test I'm running, focused right in on the element that I changed. And I went ahead and did the same thing for my treatment A, or my inject search keywords treatment. So as this loads up, this snapshot I took as I came from Google and I had searched for the term test and target. Again, really nice to have the ability to document this visually so that as you're, as you're preparing an analysis or presenting to executives, the question always comes up that says, what does the control look like? What does the test look like? You'll have it all right here. And then one last feature I want to point out is the ideas tab. This is great. What the ideas tab does is it allows you to create and order ideas. One of the things that I tell all of my clients is that tests typically, if one run right, will create more questions than they do answers. And so as we're running tests, 
answers keep or questions keep coming up. So what if we did this? What if we changed the button to red? What if we moved the nav from the right side to the left side? And so instead of again having those those ideas spread all over the company in all sorts of different formats, we can capture them all right here. And it makes it really slick and easy to add the idea. We can add different values to those ideas and we can order them. Uh, and again, it's, it's really easy I can drag and drop. So if we decide that we want to test flash banners before we test using profile parameters, I can simply drag and drop that and, and reorder these. So again, a really simple feature. It's not a game changing feature, but something I think everyone should be using. Keeping all of this information in one location is going to help enrich your, your practice and is going to help you become more mature as you run tests over time.